So today let's honour Rostam the Allfather and talk about collecting a Space Marine army worthy of a saga. Let's talk Space Wolves in Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where today we're talking Space Wolves and in this video I thought we'd do an overview of collecting the faction, starting the army from a standing start. Let's talk over why you might want to collect Space Wolves in the first place and a quick look through their model range. Some thoughts as to planning an army with some ideas for first purchases based on various different Space Marine discount kits. A look at a few faction specific kits, some ideas on expanding the army and then a quick run through some of the Space Wolves rules and how they might perform on the tabletop. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight in. The Space Wolves in Warhammer 40k are the 6th Legion of Space Marines, descendants of the proud and mighty Primarch Lehman Ross, hailing from their homeworld of Fenris. The Space Wolves are a Space Marine Legion and then chapter of Nordic and Viking sort of themes, fearsome and mighty adversaries, particularly in melee combat, each seeking to carve out a saga amongst the stars and do great deeds worthy of the Emperor's name. They tend to be practical and pragmatic in fighting approach, often butting heads with the more bureaucratic elements of the Imperium, particularly the narrow-minded Inquisition. As well as the blessings of their forefather, the genome of Ross does possess the Canis Helix, giving the warriors unnaturally long fangs, and if left unchecked, does have the possibility to degenerate space wolves into the Savage Wolfen, a weakness that has been attempted to be exploited by the Thousand Sons in the past. In battle they serve as the Emperor's Executioners, famed for their melee prowess and operating great companies, largely eschewing Rebute Gilliman's teachings in the Codex Astartes, and have multiple interesting units and formations within their ranks, from the impetuous young Blood Claws to the semi-mythical Thunderwolf Cavalry, and fighting alongside their Wolfen brothers. Miniatures wise, the Space Wolves arguably have access to one of the single biggest miniature ranges in all of Warhammer 40k, they can use any of the Space Marine miniatures as one of the biggest and most frequently updated armies out there, but also on top of that have one of the widest variety of unique kits of any of the Divergent chapters, with unique troops, Terminators, Dreadnoughts, Fembrisian Wolves and much more. For slightly more recent Primaris releases, here we have Ragnar Blackmane on the left, really quite a nice modern sculpt for them. They have a Space Wolf upgrade pack for Intercessors and Gravis Armoured units, and you can use that to make the Hounds of Morkai out of a Reva kit, a Space Wolf anti psycho unit. For their unique things though, they certainly have the Wolf theme. The Wolfen on the left are sort of devolved werewolves of Space Wolves, hard to control but utterly ferocious in close combat, and they have the legendary Thunderwolf Cavalry, riding great beasts hailing from Fenris. Otherwise, they've got unique Dreadnoughts, a unique flyer in the Stormwolf or Stormfang gunship, a sort of longship type of thing, stylized like a wolf's head. Many characters, such as Arjak Rockfist here, or Logan Grimnar, the Great Wolf himself, Chapter Master of the Space Wolves, and here riding in his chariot, Stormrider. The Space Wolves do have quite a lot of older miniatures for Firstborn Marines, such as the Blood Claws on the left or the Wolfguard Terminators on the right. These ones in particular do perhaps feel at risk of being replaced and updated at some stage. At the moment, the Space Wolves are one of the chapters that haven't had a Primaris style refresh like the Black Templars and half of the Dark Angels have. It does seem likely that at some point Games Workshop will give these guys resculpts. Otherwise, I'd also bear in mind that you might be able to find some interesting bits from Games Workshop's Horus Heresy range. They often have some interesting themed characters cast in resin. I think the Praetor on the right is quite a nice miniature here, though bear in mind that the resin miniatures can often be a lot more expensive than the plastic. Gameplay wise, Space Wolves are represented by Codex Space Marines and then Index Space Wolves for their unique units. In Index Space Wolves, they have their own theme detachment called the Champions of Ross, which has quite a lot of flavourful rules for them and we'll cover it towards the end of the video, but overall it is perhaps a bit weaker than most of the other ones from the core Codex. Classically, Space Wolves tend to play with a bit more of a melee focus compared with range compared with their kin chapters. There may be a little bit more tactical nuance and balance compared with some chapters like Blood Angels that are all about getting stuck into the foe. And within Codex Space Marines, you can certainly make the other detachments work if you'd like to, such as using the Stormlance detachment with Thunder Wolves in particular. Currently at the moment, I'd rate the Space Wolves as one of the stronger Divergent Space Marine chapters. In particular, their Thunder Wolf cavalry is pretty powerful. Though their theme detachment is unfortunately quite weak, I feel like the Champions of Ross could use further improvements. Overall though, if you want a violent and mighty force of space vikings 
to rampage their way towards the enemy and tear them apart, with rage befitting a pack of wolves, and the space wolves might well be for you. If you do choose to go with a space wolf army, there's plenty of ways that you could think about planning a force. You could think about jotting out a rough 1000 point or 2000 point list, maybe using Battle Scribe or New Recruit or Games Workshop's Warhammer app if you happen to have Codex Space Marines and can redeem the codes to access the rules. That can give you an idea as to what sort of miniatures you might want to put on the table and some sort of realistic idea of what could be achieved in that sort of army. With such a massive amount of Space Wolves and Space Marine miniatures available to you, you really could vary your collection by quite a lot of different ways. You could just go for a standard balanced army, picking things that you like the look or feel of, or maybe go for some sort of theme. You could maybe try and build around one of the detachments, such as making good use of the Champions of Rust with loads of characters, or Storm Lance and going heavy on those Thunder Wolves. You could certainly collect Space Wolves that are maybe a bit more focused on their unique units, or go for a bit more generic Primaris Space Marines, but with a Lupine hint. Or you could theme it to a Force of Legends, Maybe theme around one of the great companies which certainly have their own characters and quirks, say the Iron Wolves with their love of armoured warfare. And also I've seen quite a few Space Wolf lists that like to go for Dreadnought Heavy Army lists. They do have access to a few unique ones, which makes that kind of force feel kind of appropriate for them. Another choice that you'd have to make is how many primary Space Marines versus Firstborn Unique Miniatures. Space Wolves might be in a bit of an awkward space with a bunch of their Firstborn Miniatures potentially being queued for updates at some point in the future, though we don't know when. With that in mind, and the fact that some of the Firstborn Miniatures might not necessarily survive in the exact same form, it might be a little bit more prudent to at least have a fairly good core of things that you know aren't going to get replaced anytime soon. I'm not saying get absolutely no unique Space Wolf miniatures, that would be kind of sad, but it might be a little bit more tempting to go with somewhat of a balance if there is an update down the line at some stage. We don't know whether it might be in 10th edition or later. Otherwise though, I don't think I'd be just holding on to hold out for a Space Wolf Codex for Impetus to collect the army. Starting out, I'd be most tempted to try and paint up a test model, maybe going for something basic like a standard intercessor or assault intercessor if you're going primaris, or maybe a grey hunter or a blood claw if you're starting out with firstborn. My first thought would be to look at painting guides here on YouTube or online. There are quite a lot of ways that you can execute the iconic space wolf grey. Some colour schemes really emphasise the blue-grey aspect of it, some of it tends to go a lot more monochrome. So you could vary the feel of your force quite a lot by that. Games Workshop do handily have a contrast paint called Space Wolves Grey itself, so if you just want to get paint on models quickly, that might not be the worst option. Otherwise, for shoulder pads and iconography and theming and things, you could look into those Primaris upgrade sprues, though I do find them kind of expensive for what they are. For Space Wolves, you could think about picking up kits for the Blood Claws or Grey Hunters, as they give you lots of Space Wolf themed heads and shoulder pads and bits that you could work to scatter through other miniatures in your army to give it a bit more of an overall Fenris feel. There's certainly plenty of talented 3D printing creators out there who make some Warhammer compatible Space Wolf bits as well. Power armored parts and pauldrons and chapter icons that can add a bit more theme to a force if you want to go that way. Otherwise though, and getting on to the more exciting bit, let's talk miniatures. Aside from painting up test models, I'd probably likely start with one of the Space Marine discount sets for Space Wolves. Maybe the starter sets or Leviathan or one of the combat patrols, or if not, then maybe some basic troops. For Space Wolves, the Assault Intercessors could be a way to go if you want a fairly primaris themed force, or one of their firstborn troops choices. One of the first things people might look at could be the combat patrol box for Space Marines, Though at the moment from Games Workshop, if you're getting that, it makes sense to get the 40k starter set. As Games Workshop's Combat Patrol Space Marines is a bit of a deceptive marketing thing right now. You can literally get those exact same miniatures plus some Tyranids thrown in for cheaper. By picking up the standard 40k starter set and a Librarian, I feel like the Terminator Librarian does look suitably Room Priest for the Space Wolves. Feels like it's maybe not the worst start to an army. The Terminators and Captain are really quite cool, even if they don't have quite as many stylized bits or adornments. Plus you get some Infernus Marines. Perhaps the other most obvious discount offering is Combat Patrol Space Wolves itself. Again, maybe not a bad entry to the faction, though it's certainly Space Wolves of one certain type. In this box set you get 10 Intercessors, an Invictor Tactical Warsuit, 5 Reavers that you could also use as the anti psyker Hounds of Morkai, Though at least compared with some of the other combat patrols out there, it does have a themed leader in a unique battle leader that you get with the axe. As well as all that, you also get two copies of the Space Wolves upgrade sprue. 
It adds up to a discount of around about 22% if you're not wanting the upgrade sprues, or around 33% if you are. A bit better if you actually have good use for those chapter logos. You get roughly 460 points in the box depending on enhancements and things, though it is maybe a little bit Scout and Phobos themed in terms of choices. Maybe it depends a little bit if you want a more Scout and Outrider sort of style army, as opposed to more battle line options or mighty melee damage dealers. Overall though, I'd rate it as not awful. Seems reasonable enough to pick one up if you are going down a Primaris core to the army. For newer players buying Warhammer 40k models in general, I would bear in mind the other options open to you. Direct from Games Workshop is where a lot of people go, though in general tends to be the most expensive. As Games Workshop's system of official third-party discount resellers, they'll have almost all the exact same kits as Games Workshop, but marked down usually somewhere between 10 and 20% off. When I'm picking up new kits for Warhammer 40k, I tend to go via one of these third-party discount retailers. I'll leave the links to each of them down in the video description. Element Games in the UK for 15% off, Gap Games in Australia for 21% off, Fenris Workshop in Canada for 10% off plus their loyalty program, a War Game Portal in the USA for 15% off. Generally they're pretty solid for getting a discount on some miniatures that are generally seen as kind of expensive, and if you do buy through any of those links a very small amount goes to help support all spec tactics without costing you any more when you buy. Otherwise though, for other things besides new kits from Games Workshop, I'd certainly bear in mind the second-hand market. Space Marines and Space Wolves are both fairly popular factions, and you'll often see things turn up on eBay from time to time. Quality can certainly be variable, and some people might treat their miniatures better than others, but it can be an interesting way to save a lot of time and effort, and potentially a fair bit of money on top-line prices as well. As mentioned briefly earlier as well, you could look at other 3D printing and third-party manufacturers. A few people out there have certainly tried to make skip baseball miniatures that are legally distinct from Games Workshop, clearly going down the theme of sort of Nordic wolf-like warriors in power armour, and trying to aim for the Warhammer proxy counts as stand-in market. It can be a handy place for certain parts and upgrades like themed head shoulder pads and weapons as well. Otherwise, for Games Workshop's core offerings though, there's other combat patrol box sets, the Dark Angels Combat Patrol, while it still exists, I think is quite a nice one. This one's got a Chaplain, Intercessors, Inceptors, and a Redemptor Dreadnought. Not a bad generic starter set for Space Marines in my opinion, though it will soon be replaced by one with some Blade Guard veterans. Again, not exactly awful for Space Wolves in my opinion. Otherwise, there's the Blood Angels one, a Librarian, Aggressors, Incursors, Intercessors, and an Impulsor. Again, a fairly good Primaris sort of starter set if you're taking your Space Wolves down a Primaris route. In 10th edition, it'd be kind of rude not to mention Leviathan as well. Pretty much one of the best deals for Warhammer miniatures that Games Workshop has brought out so far. I suspect that the majority of people who wanted one of these have got one by now. There are loads of Space Marines in this, and it gets you a massive amount of Tyranids for £150. You could potentially resell one of the box halves. And while it is out of stock from Games Workshop's core web store, there are plenty of places that still have them out there. Lots of places have them just in their actual physical shops, including Warhammer stores. In the UK, I noticed that Element Games still seems to have a good supply of them. Again, linked in the video description if you'd like to pick up one of these. Otherwise, focusing on Space Wolf unique stuff, I feel like a unit I'd be tempted to get at least fairly early might be the Thunder Wolf Cavalry. They're £37, $60 or €50 Euros for three of them. A semi-legendary cavalry formation where the Wolf Guard are famed to break in mighty Thunder Wolves from the mountains of Fenris. And they often tend to be at the heart of competitive lists currently, though their fortunes have waxed and waned over time. Currently, they're really quite mighty for what you get though. 90 points for three models with four wounds with their storm shields with a four plus invulnerable. They get a big seven attacks at strength five and AP minus one with extra damage on the charge. And they're quite nicely supported by various Thunderwolf characters out there. Another one, iconic one that I might be tempted to pick up at some stage might be the Space Wolf Venerable Dreadnought. Maybe building one up as Bjorn the Fell Handed in particular. But you can have different sorts of them. This one's got a Fenrisian Great Axe and a Blizzard Shield and he can make a Wolf and Dreadnought, or the Brutal Crazed Murder Fang. Beyond the Fell Handed is an icon of the chapter though, 180 points for a Mighty Dreadnought. Very tough with his 8 wounds, having a 5 plus feel no pain and halving damage, so it eats up a lot of damage when the enemy shoots him, and he messes with enemy stratagems and has a pretty brutal melee profile with 6 strength 12 and damage 3 attacks. Otherwise, for the more recent Space Wolf range, I feel like Vagna Blackmane would be one of the miniatures I'd be tempted to pick up at some stage. So far, is the only proper primary Space Wolf character so far, besides the battle leader in the combat patrol. He's the Jarl of the Blackmane's Great Company, wielding the brutal chainsaw Frostfang. 
and kind of notable for being one of the very few individuals out there who's fought and won against Gasgol Thraka himself. In game, I'd say he's a bit less auto include than a few of the others out there, though I think he is very usable if you like what he has to offer. 10 attacks at strength 8, AP 3, and damage 2 on a charge with sustained hits is utterly brutal, and he gets his warriors into battle a bit quicker, allowing your units to advance and charge. He's pretty solid leading either blade guard veterans or even assault intercessors, where he could potentially profit from their re-rolls, being able to re-roll wound rolls against enemies on objectives. Finally, as mentioned, I might be kind of tempted to get at least one of the kits of either the Grey Hunters or Blood Claws. The Firstborn Marines are interesting units in their own right, though if you wanted just to have a whole bunch of Space Wolf bits, this is perhaps one of the most economical ways to get your hands on them. Lots of themed shoulder pads, extra bits, wolf pelts and talismans and the like. Quite nice to have a good supply of things to scatter throughout an army to add a bit more theme. In general, I'd usually aim to build up stepwise towards an 1,000 point or 2,000 point army, collecting things in small chunks and then painting them up, rather than going out and buying an entire army all in one go and drowning yourself under a sea of unpainted plastic. Once you've got a core of units that you think will either be useful in lots of games or you just really like the theme and feel of, you can think about expanding things a little further, though I would bear in mind that in Warhammer 40k, Rules and points do change at least fairly frequently, so there's a good argument for just getting a good supply of the things that you like the look of. For Space Marines though, I think I would be tempted to try and focus on getting at least some mainline damage dealers that can deal with the heaviest threats in the enemy army. I feel like with Marines it's kind of easy to wind up with a whole load of basic bolter guys or skirmish infantry of one sort or another. Perhaps the Space Wolf Combat Patrol being a good example of that. Lots of things that are okay against light or medium infantry, but don't really handle enemy tanks or armour well. At time of recording, here are just a few ideas for slightly stronger units from the Cork Space Marine Codex. Eliminators, Infiltrators and Scouts are all handy for their forward deploy shenanigans, Infiltrators being quite good to hold objectives. The Ballistas and the Redemptor Dreadnoughts are both fairly powerful. Gladiator Lancers are godly anti-tank. The Repulsor and Repulsor Executioner are both usable, as are the Mighty Land Raiders to deliver melee threats into the heart of the enemy. For generic Space Marine damage dealers, Hellblasters, Eradicators, Blade Guard and Terminators are all at least playable. Inceptors and Aggressors are interesting, though I feel like perhaps at the moment there's quite a lot of the Space Marine army that's just alright but maybe not desperately stand out. Games Workshop did hit a few of the absolute strongest things in the book recently. Otherwise, for more unique choices, I'd probably be tempted to have at least a good contingent of Thunderwolves with any and all support characters that you want from them. For characters, perhaps some of my first picks might be Beyond the Fell Handed and Logan Grimnar. Bjorn's pretty tanky, and Logan gives you some big all across the board rerolls as well as his melee damage. The Wolfen feel really efficient for 80 points given that they get damage to melee attacks now, as per one of the index erratas. Blood Claws are kind of nice with Auric the Slayer, a very cheap Space Marine infantry unit that can punch up surprisingly. And I probably will be tempted by a squad or two of Fembrisian Wolves, they're really quite nice, cheap outriders to do secondary objectives and things and they can just do screening things that you don't have to sacrifice valuable marines on. In general, I'd probably have a very rough idea for a 2,000 point army list and work towards it, playing games as you go and adapting based on lessons learned. Speaking of the Space Wolf rules, besides actual data sheets, I thought I'd just briefly mention their detachment options. The standard Space Wolf force can feel themselves as the champions of Rus, and this is their theme detachment from the Index. In that they get the deeds worthy of saga rule, the idea is that if you have a character unit that does one of the sagas, then they unlock that boost for the rest of the game for your entire army. I feel like the rule is really quite themed and fluffy, you get the warrior born which could give you sustained hits, but you have to destroy an enemy character model, the saga of the bear which means that you have to have a character gravely injured but survive, or beast slayer for taking down a monster or vehicle unit which gives your army lethal hits in melee. I really quite like the evocative feel of this one. It does encourage an army with lots of characters trying to forge their own destiny, though I do feel like from an actual gameplay perspective, it maybe is a bit painful. Against the wrong opponent, particularly if they're playing a bit cagey, you might not be able to access any of these for a good part of the game. It does feel like the detachment is a bit unreliable, really. Otherwise, for stratagems, you get the option to flex into the sagas, which is kind of powerful to turn on the lethal hits or sustained hits as you need it. You've got go for the throat to get AP in melee or lance melee if the beast slayer is active. A 4 back and shoot one, an extra consolidation one, and a 5 plus feel no pain against mortal wounds or psychic attack, many of them boosted if you get into those sagas. For enhancements, if you're just looking to finish up a list and have a few points left over, the frost weapon's alright for precision with plus 1 strength and an extra AP minus 1. 
Black Death for 25 points could be pretty fun on a Thunder Hammer as well. That could give you devastating wounds on a 4 plus against monsters and vehicles. Particularly good for a Lord or something in a Thunder Wolf unit. Overall, the Champions of Rust, I feel like, does have some fun points. Though in general, it is considered to be one of the weaker Space Wolf detachments, at least compared with some other things that you can get in the Core Space Marine Codex. Speaking of which, at least at time of recording, the Space Wolves currently are doing quite well borrowing the formation of the Storm Lance from the White Scars. This one gives you a whole bunch of boosts and synergies for mounted Space Marine units, and mounted includes the Mighty Thunder Wolves. The Core Advance and Charge rule is very handy, and helps out non-mounted things as well. Really big things for the Thunder Wolves though, is that there's a big durability stratagem for minus one to hit and wound against shooting. That's just enormously massive for keeping a unit alive. There's a reactive move to allow you to move away from foes, which could potentially stop you being charged, and a crazy big 2 CP one for advancing 9 inches, which with the advance and charge thing means that you could just have a crazy charge threat range all the way across the board. I'd rate the enhancements as okay, but the stratagems as the main selling point here. Optimised lists of Stormlands tend to take 3 big units of Thunderwolves, usually with battle leaders and wolf lords in them, and let the carnage commence as they just rampage their way across the tabletop, destroying things as they go. They definitely aren't the only options though, I do quite like the way that the detachment system gives you different ways to play that you could use the exact same miniatures for. Gladius Task Force I think is also fun, and you could do a, an aggressive fire discipline combo, or Iron Storm Spearhead is just good for any chapter. If you're playing a fun Space Wolf Dreadnought list, then that could be one of the ways to go there. Finally, just for one example of a competitive Space Wolf list on the tabletop, here's a Stormlands Task Force list that was run by Nick Conkrane to win a tournament called the Witch Trials GT. I think it would now be a tiny bit over 2,000 points, seeing as Games Workshop up to the points on Inceptors, so I feel like that's maybe more support units to the massive Thunderwolf push. This list just goes all in on Wolf Cavalry, three enormous units of six Thunderwolves with Storm Shields, led by Battle Leaders with Power Fists and Shields, and Wolf Lords and Thunderwolves with Power Fist and Shield as well. Between all those boosts, they have some pretty scary abilities. The Battle Leaders have their own interesting reactive move thing as well, and the Wolf Lords can give you boosts to advance and charging. Otherwise, in the support, there's a few infiltrating units, two Eliminators with Snipers and Last Fusals, one unit of five Infiltrators that could be a good bet to guard a home field objective, a Plasma Inceptor squad for some close range dropping, a drop pod just empty for nuisance screening and making a problem of itself, and then a trio of gladiator tanks, two lancers for dedicated anti-tank, and a reaper for some murderous anti-infantry firepower. I feel like if you wanted to, you could lean on a few more unique Space Wolf units if you wanted. I feel like a cheap unit or two of Femrisian Wolves is really going to be a bad thing in just about any list. As mentioned, since the rules update, I wouldn't be too surprised to see at least a few people playing with some Wolfen, even if they aren't going to be helping out with the objective game. In any case, hope that's given you a few ideas for starting a Space Wolf army, and the video has been somewhat helpful. If you are a Space Wolf veteran player and have any other tips for getting into the army, feel free to let us all know down in the comments, it's good to help out newer players. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day, I'm sure I'll have some more for the Space Wolves in the future. Finally, if you have found this video or any others on the channel useful, I would just like to mention that Allspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.